hello from wherever you are today our focus will be on steel on sulfur and its compounds but we want to discuss the chemical properties of sulfur you might remember the last time we discussed general information about sulfur for example its occurrence how it can be obtained from the ground by mainly the frustage process and there are a lot of of sulfur we finalized that lesson by discussing the physical properties of sulfur so today we want to discuss the chemical properties of sulfur in the introduction slide here we have a very beautiful picture of monoclinic sulfur i'm hoping you remember monoclinic sulfur where we said it has needle-like structure or it is needle-like in appearance needle-like crystals so that is our monoclinic sulfur but our aim is going to be on the chemical properties of sulfur so we begin the first one is the combustion of sulfur or the burning of sulfur in plentiful supply of air we have said sulfur burns in air or excess air with a blue flame leaving behind a misty gas why is that so the reason is because sulfur reacts with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide however in that very reaction since the oxygen is in excess some of the sulfur some of the sulfur dioxide which has been formed reacts with oxygen to produce the sulfur trioxide now this sulfur trioxide formed is the one which is responsible for the mist that we see however the sulfur trioxide is in small quantities and if we wanted to get to them to get it in large quantities we may need to supply certain conditions for example a catalyst adjust for a given pressure and alter the reactants and the products at particular times we shall discuss that later when we talk about what we call the contact process for us now our focus is on what happens when sulfur reacts with oxygen we are saying it burns first of all with a blue flame characteristic blue flame to form sulfur dioxide however we also see mist so the mist is because of the formation of sulfur tri oxide don't forget what is observed and the equation of reaction then the second reaction we're interested in is the reaction of sulfur with metals and then the non-metals sulfur reacts with metals such as iron and copper like we have demonstrated in these reactions here to form sulfides iron will react with sulfur to form iron to sulfide this reaction is very important or very interesting because once the iron is reacting with sulfur especially if you are carrying out this in a test tube which you shall do it glows red first glows red however when we leave it to stand the reaction the, the solid the product formed slowly turns to black the reason is because we have formed what we are calling iron 2 sulfide for copper the same thing happens the solid which is formed is black is a black solid notice the formula of copper sulfide however if you look at a non-metal like carbon carbon combines directly directly with sulfur at 600 degrees celsius to form a liquid a very important liquid which we call carbon disulfide why am i calling it important this is a very useful solvent it's a very useful solvent so carbon reacts with sulfur at 600 degrees celsius to form a liquid which we are calling carbon disulfide so that is very important something for emphasis the reaction of iron and sulfur is very very useful you might remember in our earlier chemistry senior one we talked about how this reaction can be used to demonstrate the, the properties of a mixture and the properties of a compound if i bring a mixture of iron and sulfur meaning i get iron filings i mix them with sulfur powder which is yellow in color in a test tube or in a, a beaker and i bring a magnet all the sul all the iron will be attracted by the magnet however when I heat and I form a compound which is iron sulfide, the compound can't be attracted by a magnet. So we are seeing that a mixture of iron and sulfur can be separated by a magnet. However, once I form a compound of iron to sulfide, then it can't be attracted by a magnet. 
So that is something for purposes of reminding ourselves of that chemistry. Then we want to look at the reaction of sulfur with acids. Sulfur can react with acids, but the acids have to be concentrated, so that's the condition for the reaction. The acids have to be concentrated. Why? If the acids are dilute, they are not strong oxidizing agents. However, when the acids are hot and concentrated, then they are strong oxidizing agents, so they can react with the sulfur. For example, the concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with the, sorry, concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with sulfur to form sulfur dioxide and water. Concentrated nitric acid reacts with sulfur. Forget the state symbol here is supposed to be a liquid. A liquid. Concentrated sulfuric acid, sorry, nitric acid reacts with sulfur to form sulfuric acid, nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas, and water. Now notice, for nitric acid, for us to speed up the rate of reaction, we may need to add a little bit of bromine. But the reason we have said, these two acids are strong oxidizing agents, so they are able to react with sulfur. They should be hot and concentrated. If in dilute form the reaction does not occur because dilute acids are not strong oxidizing agents. So that is something which is very important for us to, to learn. So we want to summarize it by looking at the uses of sulfur. We have talked about how sulfur is found, how sulfur is obtained from where it is found. The, we have talked about the allotropes, we have talked about the physical and the chemical properties of what use is this sulfur. First of all, the most important one, sulfur is used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very useful because it can be used in various industrial processes and other non-industrial processes. Uh -huh. Sulfur is used to dust vines to prevent the growth of fungi. This you might know. Some people use sulfur to, to, to treat fungal infections. Uh -huh. Sulfur is used in the, in the manufacture of what we call calcium hydrogen sulfide. This is a bleaching agent in wood pulp, especially in the formation of paper. Then, sulfur is used in the vulcanization of rubber. What is the vulcanization of rubber? This is the heating of raw, of raw rubber with the sulfur. The purpose is to make it the rubber hard, tough, and more durable. So that's why we, we heat sulfur. We, we add rubber, sorry, we add sulfur to rubber in the process of what we are calling vulcanization, and then we heat. We are able to turn our sulfur into hard, tough, and more durable. Other uses of sulfur include it can be used in the manufacture of dyes, fireworks, and other compounds like carbon disulfide. We have already seen that carbon disulfide is a very important solvent. It is used in the making of ointments. I talked about this one briefly in the treatment of diseases, for example, ringworms can be used in the manufacture of sulfate fertilizers. It can also be used as a food additive. Why? Because it helps in the preservation of food. Uh -huh. So after we have learned about the chemical properties and the uses of sulfur, then we need to test our understanding of this topic or what we have learned today. The first part we discussed last time. I'm hoping we can be able to define what allotropy is, the different crystalline allotropes of sulfur, and the differences in the crystalline allotropes. How about if we move to the second part, which was the focus of our lesson today, whereby we are asking ourselves, set the conditions, observations, and write equations for the reaction with, or sulfur with, one, oxygen. How does sulfur react with oxygen? How does sulfur react with iron? And then nitric acid. They're asking you for the conditions, meaning what is necessary for this reaction to occur, what do you observe, and then can you be able to write the equations of reaction? So, basically, that's what I wanted us to discuss, hoping you'll be able to answer the exercise. And if you have any issues, you can always find me on these links. You can send me a mail, you can call me or send me a message. I'll be able to respond to your, to your query. For more resources, you can check out these various sources. Thank you so much.